Welcome everyone. My name is Medina. I'm from Australia and I have the channels Arise Humanity on YouTube and Soul Family on Rumble. First of all, I'm deeply honoured to bring to you today a Global Solar Eclipse Forum 2024 of some incredible souls from around the world. These people are all change makers and powerful voices committed to the evolution of humanity. And I wanted to bring together a forum today to celebrate humanity's uh, positive steps forward in our own evolution, the progress we've been making, the shifts. And, you know, there is so much sort of negativity out there in social media that it's really good to have a positive uh, experience of something where people are talking about all the ways that the world is improving and that we are creating a, a beautiful new earth for everyone to experience. Spiritually and metaphysically, we're coming upon what is considered to be one of the greatest uh, cosmic events in the last 5,000 years, which is the solar eclipse coming up on the 8th of April. And this could be a complete consciousness shift for humanity, for our planet, and completely transform our DNA. It's such a huge opportunity. And so I really wanted to bring together a forum at this particular divine moment to celebrate what's coming up and for us all to be mindful of holding a really high frequency or vibration at this particular time on the planet. So uh, the 2024 solar eclipse is one that I'm going to get uh, Dr. Alex Ling to talk about in a minute. And there's all sorts of narratives surrounding this eclipse that's coming up, some not so positive and some extremely positive about, you know, the opportunity that it's going to be creating. And so this is really at the centre of the forum today. And we have people here today representing Australia, New Zealand, USA, UK, Italy, Greece, Ireland, Romania, Israel, and I wanted to bring people from around the planet together to symbolize the uh, coming together of humanity and the unity consciousness that we're all wanting to create and the fact that we're all one human family. Oh, could you just mute yourself? So, sorry, Gali Lucy. It's um, just cutting into your sound there, Gali Lucy, if you just mute your microphone. Thank you. Um, and we're wanting to celebrate the coming together of unity consciousness on the planet and the fact that we're all one human family and there is no um, there is no separation. Uh, and without further ado, I would like to just bring in Dr. Alex Ling and just mention that it's such an important time right now, I believe, for clearing out the old shadows of who we were, our old self, and to bring in a focus on self-love and uh, doing a lot of inner work as we approach this very special cosmic moment, which is the solar eclipse. So with that, I'd like to bring in our first guest, Dr. Alex Ling. Dr. Alex Ling is from the UK. He's a physicist and worked in the area of archaeology. He has further studied functional medicine and now works in research. Uh, he has a very interesting history that his father was the highest Grand Master Mason in Germany and worked with uh, relics. And um, were, so Alex has a whole story behind that, which he's been talking to such a stone about. But Alex has also created a Aquan product, which is a very high frequency product for humanity. And he's also put together... Um, with, we chatted about creating a global event, but really it's uh, Alex's initiative, which is HUM, which is a project to really raise the frequency on the planet at the time of the solar eclipse and harness, you know, very positive energies for this uh, opportunity for, for humanity to really shift forward. So welcome, Alex. And I want you to share with us why this particular solar eclipse is so important. And if you could also share with us more about the HUM initiative. I've had people asking me, what do I do in order to participate in this initiative? So I'll get you to share all that with uh, the viewers today. So welcome, Alex. Hello. Hello, Medin. Yes, I will do that straight away. Um, yes, let's talk about the 
eclipse um and people are asking me why is this eclipse so different or so special from any other eclipse so first of all an eclipse either lunar eclipse or solar eclipse is a very special event for our ancestors or has been for our ancestors anyway because in two ways so it was either a good omen or bad omen so we can see that quite clearly that is still kind of imprinted in our dna right now that so many people associated with something extremely positive and some do uh, think that something or horrible is going to happen. So it's quite a natural thing because the eclipse is quite a, a, an enormous, spectacular event, a celestial event, which happens, you know, only so often. But um, yeah, this particular one is, uh, is so special because we have two other events which are simultaneously happening. So which is the uh, solar maximum. Um, which we are in at the moment. So that's like an 11 year cycle where the sun is kind of extremely active. And uh, so we get a lot of solar flares uh, and we had quite a number of those over the last uh, few years, but um, also especially over the last few weeks. Um, and, uh, and that kind of all leads together to, to the solar eclipse on that spe specific day on the 8th of the uh, April coming up very soon. And uh, on that spe specific day, the ionosphere uh, is impacted by this event. So that means that the uh, free electrons in the ionosphere are spacing out much more than uh, usually. So the distance is getting uh, quite, quite large between the uh, free electrons. That means that, for example, our GPS system is affected by it. Our communication system could be down. All these kind of things, uh, which we are so reliant on. Um, that's what we call also the artificial matrix, uh, which has been formed to not only um, be ben beneficial to us, but also is some form of control tool, of course, to keep us in, in that specific place where we are. And, um, uh, it's all about that moment, four minutes, 28 seconds, point one in that totality of the solar eclipse where this event is happening and the free electrons are spacing out, which means that we can or that there is a window opportunity um, of us reconnecting with the Earth's matrix. So that's the Earth's energy, which is there anyway in, in our field, in the magnetic field of the Earth, but specifically on that day, because the other matrix is going down, if you like, we can connect to the true matrix again. And that's, uh, that's quite um, a rare event as such, because it is uh, um, accompanied by the, solar, by the solar flare. So, uh, of course, that is, is a really big window opportunity. It happens only like every 5,000 years or so. And uh, the last event actually, which happened uh, was seven or se 7,000 years and another one uh, about 14,000 years coinciding with the, um, uh, the great flood at the time. Um, so where there was a, a, a rapid ice melt happening and, uh, uh, and so on. Um, I think that is why people get nervous because of this event, because they think that some global disasters are happening. And yes, usually coinciding as we just had, are uh, very often earthquakes. Um, that's just a normal thing because Earth has to align with these kind of energies. Uh, but it doesn't mean that um, these energies are aim <coughs> excuse me aimed against us. It's just something we had. We usually live with us uh, with it. So um, in in ancient times, people would be prepared because their knowledge about these kind of celestial events are much more profound than today. So they, they could, um, for example, in Gobekli Tepe, they would know these kind of events would happen. That's the site in, in, uh, uh, in Turkey, southeastern Turkey. And um, the, uh, for example, Pillar, Pillar 43 was connected to such event, um, which was a solar eclipse and also um, uh, an event which will, would coincide with that. Uh, so yes, in brief, this is a very, very amazing window opportunity for people to connect. And the hum, just very briefly, is uh, a tool which we can use and it's been freely given to us. Uh, it's within us anyway. And uh, the hum is a frequency or a sound which is also 
uh, recorded from the gravitational uh, waves uh, out of uh, out of space. Just recently, they have recorded that. And this particular sound is in nature. For example, the humming of bees, the purring of cats, uh, the ocean crashing onto the sand. This is all the same kind of frequency. And that particular frequency also aligns with our root chakra. And that root chakra then again connects us beautifully to our planet. So it's a win-win situation really to use this particular sound. And the idea is to hum together with as many people as possible. We have already just about 2 million people who are joining in with this event uh, and, and humming uh, to, uh, to reunite us as humans to our planet. And that's what it's all about. That's brilliant. So it's really something even people can do at home by themselves just to hum. And I think you also mentioned that people naturally often just hum the same note, which is around C4, slightly lower than the middle C. So if people at home are watching that are not in a group, you can still just do it yourself at the time of the eclipse. And um, in Australia, I know it's about 4.17 in the morning on Tuesday morning, uh, and it goes for as you said four minutes and 28 seconds so people can do it they've got no no excuse not to do it if you're if you feel like it resonates with you it's a wonderful thing to do and it can unite everyone and align everyone in frequency so thank you so much Alex uh I really appreciate your contribution I know that you're off to the zone of silence in South America I think later today so that you can be in a very special place at the time of the eclipse so thank you so much for uh, you know, allowing to, uh, your beautiful energy to be here with us today. So thank you. No problem. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. And we'll, we'll chat soon. <laughs> Lovely. Um, okay, so now I'd like to introduce, um, coming from the UK to us back to Australia, Bill Bennett. And he is a former reporter and now an Australian-based filmmaker and author with 17 feature films behind him and 12 documentaries. He has made profound films which explore the human condition like Facing Fear. And his recent release was based on a memoir of the sacred Spanish pilgrimage walk, the Camino, the way, my way. So it's a real honor to have Bill here. And he is an observer and an archivist, I would say, of humanity at this time. So it'll be interesting to hear your insights, Bill, on what you think is happening with humanity right now? What are you seeing? Are there any positive takeaways that you can share with the audience at this time? So big welcome to you, Bill. Uh, thank you very much, Medina. Thank you for that introduction and for being here as well. Um, yeah, so I'm just in the final stages of finishing this movie uh, called The Way My Way, which is a, a dramatic feature film about um, about the Camino. Um, now I've walked five Caminos uh, in the last um, 10 years or so. Um, and I've got to know the Camino people, the psyche quite well. Here's some re really interesting figures. Um, when you walk, um, so the Camino, the traditional Camino is an 800 kilometer, 500 meter, 500 mile, I beg your pardon, uh, walk from a small village on the French side of the Pyrenees, right across Spain, to a place called Santiago de Compostela, which is where the big cathedral there is, where the um, relics of uh, St. James are believed to be entombed. Um, if you walk this walk, then you can get what's called a Compostela, which is a certificate saying that um, saying that you've walked the walk. Hey, and by the way, you should uh, shut me up when I've gone for five minutes, okay? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> like, like, like wave a flag or, you know, or just go. I'll wave my hands. <laughs> yeah, do, do that. Um, some really interesting things. Six million people walked one part of the Camino last year. Six million people from all over the world. Wow. Now, that's, those are figures from the Pilgrim's Office. Now, they didn't complete the whole walk. Um, some, some of them did. Um, approximately nearly half a million people got what's called their Compostela last year. But... Six million people, approximately, walked at least some section of this pilgrimage route well, from all nations all over the world. Now, you've got to ask yourself, what's going on here? Why, why is this 
happening. Um, what draws somebody to walk 800 kilometers, 500 miles across a country that most of us don't speak the language? You know, we're foreigners. So something's going on. And I really do firmly believe that it is an expression of a shift in global consciousness. You know, because um, you talk to people who, who do this walk and some say, well, it's a bucket list thing. And, you, you know, there's nothing spiritual about this at all. You know, I, or it's, it's just something that I heard other people were doing and so I'm doing it. But what I've, what I've come to learn is that these people who might start off with that um, perhaps um, non-spiritual gender, if you like, the walk gets to them, the pilgrimage gets to them. And, and here's the reason why I believe it does. That has been a pilgrimage route now for nearly 2,000 years. And if you walk that walk with intent, then that spiritual intent will go out through the chakras in your foot. People don't realize, but you do have chakras in your feet. And it's that spiritual intent is implanted, imprinted in that pilgrimage route. And so what happens then is over 2,000 years or more, this extraordinary repository of spiritual intent lies within that, it's like a ley line really, lies within that route. And then if somebody comes along and, they, and they're receptive to, that, to accepting that spiritual um, intent, that, that, that imprint that, that's in there, then their life will be affected and it'll be changed. That's why you've got people in their 80s and 90s, people with cancer walking the Camino and finding they're cured. And this is true. You, you know, you've got extremely elderly people doing this this walk and and um, and managing it. There is something there. Um, I've probably spent um, more than five minutes, but I, I would just like to finish off with um, with something that um, a lady uh, before this um, movie I did. I did a, a documentary called Facing Fear, which is available. Um, and as part of that, I interviewed a woman named Sister Jenna. She's uh, one of the leaders in the Brahman Kumaris Kam in North America. And she said something to me which has stayed with me ever since. She said, what I try and do is I try and love everyone the same. Now, if you think about that, love everyone the same, that's really bloody hard. <laughs> you know, like I've got some family issues and I'm thinking, can I apply that to my <laughs> to, to my sister who... You know, I've got um, problems with. Love that, everyone. That saying. reminds me of the famous saying by Ram Das. He said, "Um, if you want to be spiritual, try spending a week with your family." <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's the hardest thing. Um, but but you know, if you if you apply that to your life, love everyone the same. Um, it can make a profound impact not only on you but the people that you come in contact with. And so, I just like to leave my little bit. Uh, with that thought that's beautiful bill i think that's such a positive sharing it, it, those incredible numbers of people doing the camino at this time it's no accident and it's it really bodes well i think for the path that we're on so that was wonderful to hear thank you so much for your wonderful contribution there uh so now i'd like to go to gali lucy in israel i'm so pleased that we have uh, someone speaking from Israel as well at this time. And Gali Lucy is amazing. She's a psychic medium, author, and a singer. And on the 1st of April, uh, a few days ago, she did predict and wrote down the earthquake and a tsunami, uh, potential tsunami in Taiwan, Japan, and the Korea region. And as we know, a couple of days ago, a few days after that, we had this huge earthquake in Taiwan, which was the biggest earthquake there in a quarter of a century and uh, she stated that she knows it's somehow related to the solar eclipse so Gali Lucy um, I'd love you to share with us what you think is happening in Israel now and how this will affect the rest of the world what we can expect because I know that you do uh, predict timelines as much as you can and also no pressure but when you're feeling that we are able to reach the you know magical moment of world peace on the planet and and i know that you have some uh beliefs or, or theories on on that or channelings that you've brought through on that so welcome gali lucy 
Hello, hello, Medina, and all the other guests. Hello. What is happening now, according to what we are seeing around of us, we are separating from the Pisces age, and we are moving forward to the Aquarius age. As I predicted in all of my books, I have five books. And I predicted what will happen um, 20,000 years ahead of us because there is a, a cycle that 52 years that repeated to the, to itself all the time, 25 years of chaos and then 27 years of new creation. So we are separating from the chaos uh, 2023. And now in 2024, we are moving forward to the new creation. And it's going to be wonderful again on earth. Uh, of course, the Pilladian above, above us are taking control and we are belong to the, to the Pilladian who are cleaning up this world for us because many, many people, evil people want to destroy humanity. And now the creation, of course, from God, they are uh, cleaning up the world. They started from Ukraine and deleted and destroyed the nuclear and the biological weapons that want, they want to destroy the world. And everything is being cleaned up. Of course, it has to be with water because Aquarius is the sign of the water. You have a bucket full of water and you pull it off and you clean it up the world with water. And uh, Ukraine was the first country and Israel uh, is, the is the second country because <laughs> I'm a citizen of Israel, but I have, not, <laughs> I have nothing to do with the cabal and all the things because the citizen in every country are the victims. And Israel is the head of the deep state and the head of the snake. And you uh, say the president uh, Trump, of course, is the hidden president. And he is taking control of Israel because Israel is already the, the star, the 52 stars of the uh, United States. Maybe it sounds uh, a, a, a bit odd, but uh, we are a part of United States. Uh, Washington DC will be the 51st, 51 uh, stars of, of the USA. And uh, all the borders around Israel has been locked because you have about uh, 900K of people who are, uh, belong to the Kabbalah deep state who are in Israel and the army have to cut them because all the borders are being locked down. Uh, if you are a citizen, as I am, a citizen of, you, of, of Israel, you can fly out and you can come back, but those people cannot do that. Because of that, we have the biometri biometrical uh, ID and passport. And we have done it from five and 10 years ago. Uh, everything is being prepared. I know this timeline is very important. Those new uh, new days are coming, uh, especially on April and May. It's going to be wow in, in Israel because we are being cleaned up and every country in the world is going to be cleaned up as Israel is. Uh, they are hiding, those Kabbalah and deep state people, they are hiding. Uh, uh, hiding behind being a Jewish and, Kazar and a Zionist, there is no such things because um, the good people are not involved in all of this satanic uh, uh, ritual and bad things, especially uh, beneath the ground. You have thousands of uh, uh, tunnels. <clears throat> are being cleaned from 2020 ahead. All the world is being cleaned because we are entering to the Aquarius age. The next year, I just uh, let me start from this year uh, briefly. 2024, the sec the first half of 2024 is going to be a war, so-called war in Israel. Because this, it started from Gaza, it's going from, to, to the north and from the sea and to Jordan also. It's going to be so-called war because uh, Israel is being cleaned. 
The second half of uh, 2024, from June of, uh, until December 2024, <clears throat> it's going to be it's going to be a, a lot of draft of peace. You know, talking back and forward, making peace in all with all the the, the other countries in the Middle East. 2025, the first half from uh, December to uh, Ju June 2025, it's going to be peace in the Middle East. It's going to be announced. This peace is already exist from 2017. It's made by the President Trump. And within, from 2025, within three or five years, so 2028 and 2023, uh, 2030, it's going to be peace worldwide. And this is the song that I'm singing from the entities that are giving me the lyrics and, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and the melody also. And I'm singing a lot of songs, or almost uh, 50 songs, uh, already um, from the entities, giving me a lot of boost of hope, uh, which I give to other people worldwide, because uh, it's going to be a glorious, it's going to be great again. This is what I say all the time. I know that we see the fear, and thank God that we can see the truth beneath our eyes in, in those days from the corona and until now because everything has its own uh, purpose and we have to see the truth in order to believe. Yes. And it's going to be great again. So put a smile on your face, always believe in God because it's going to be amazing. Thank you, Gali, Lucy. That was incredible, wonderful information. And I love the fact that you are f you really focus on the positive of, of what's coming and, and that we're going through this cleanup process. I'm going to play your incredible song at the end, which is so poignant and so touching. It's deeply moving. And that I'll definitely share that right at the end. It's, it's incredible. Uh, so thank you so much for your contribution. And uh, now I'd like to go, if I could, to Jeffrey C. Olson. Uh, Jeffrey C. Olson is a number one international best-selling author who has inspired audiences with his incredible tale, a uh, true story of perseverance and inner strength. I mean, what Jeffrey has experienced uh, is something that, you know, only a truly remarkable soul would be able to experience and be the person he is now, very positive, a very deeply loving person. And um, I really encourage people to read his book. It was a number one bestseller and he's written many other books as well. So Jeffrey is uh, now sharing his gifts with people in the world. He has a powerful connection to nature, loves being outdoors and... I love that he writes so humbly among Jeff's many accomplishments. He is most fulfilled by simply being a trusted friend. That's beautiful, Jeffrey. I really wanted you here today to share your beautiful views on the moment in time now that we're experiencing on the planet Earth and what you see coming. I know that you're so, um, you so much embody uh, divine love in, in your whole energy. So welcome. <laughs> Wow, you're so kind, and it's an honor. It's an honor to be to be with you all and to be talking about such a magnificent event, this eclipse, and um, and the state of the world. You know the state of humanity that we're in, and I love that we're moving in a more positive direction. That works for me. And uh, eclipses are interesting. I watch the sky. I, I've moved away to the country. I've come back home to the farm and uh, I can see the stars. It's very dark. I watch the sky. And this eclipse is interesting because it appears that the light is blocked. It appears that darkness comes. And that's synonymous with what we're experiencing perhaps in the world in many places. Boy, it feels so heavy, so dark. And yet the darkness cannot take away the light. Even if we don't see it, the light is there. There is light. 
there is love, there is peace, there is beauty, there is connection, there is oneness. And I, um, you know, I don't speak that from theory or theology or dogma of any kind. Um, I, uh, I had a near-death experience. I was in a horrible automobile accident. It crushed both my legs. My left leg was amputated above the knee. It broke my back. It crushed my rib cage. The seatbelt came through me and ruptured all my insides. The worst part of that is that the whole family was in the car and my wife and youngest son were killed instantly in the accident. And I was driving. I was sober. I was obeying the laws. I may have dozed off at the will just for a moment, which caused me to swerve. When I refer to darkness, that was a dark moment. That was a dark moment. And yet, with my injuries, my soul left my body. Light came and held me and took me to other realms where I truly experienced unconditional love. Love with no conditions. Not only for me and my own life and my own existence, but for every living soul, every living soul. And I say unconditional love. Love is unconditional. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not love. It's love. I experience the pure divine love that is actually alive and well in each and every one of us. In fact, we're manifestations of that love. And what I see happening in the world is that love blooming blossoming you know here in the fall we 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 take bulbs the big seeds and we we put them in the ground with with the knowing with the trust that they will come up you know they'll come up after winter and yet that bulb must come completely apart it it literally turns itself inside out in order to grow and bloom and blossom into something so beautiful and what I feel in my heart is that's that's the process we're in. We might be literally coming apart and being turned inside out. That something far more beautiful will blossom. Something far more grand will come. And it's in each and every one of us. You know, I don't have some huge platform and some big agenda. I... I I work very closely here with the horses, you know, and the and the cows and the sheep. And my favorite thing right now is spring is coming and the birds, the birds come and sing. And that's what wakes me in the morning at first light. You know, it's still very early in the morning, but the birds begin to sing. And that's that's a miracle. That's a sign to me is the birds are singing. And they're here and they're present and uh, their song carries on no matter what. And we can be much like the birds. We can just keep singing. We can just keep being our unique vibration in the world, even if that's only affecting the people under our own roof, because it ripples out. It ripples out. Every act of kindness ripples out tenfold. Every kind smile to a stranger on the street ripples out tenfold. And as I, you know, live in love and strive to be love in every way, I believe that's how we change the world. I believe that's how humanity shifts. I believe that's how it works. It's so beautiful to see everyone here, you know, from all different countries, different cultures, different races, different genders. And yet we are far more alike than we are different. You know, as, as unique manifestations of something far more divine, we have far more in common than we have in our different beliefs or our different cultures or our different races. And if we can lean into that, you know, as this eclipse comes and passes, the light will come, even if it feels dark. And uh, whether it's lightness or darkness, if we lean into the love that we truly are, if we lean into what we have in common rather than what we have in, in difference, that's where we'll find beauty. 
that's where we'll find true peace. That's where we'll find connection. And that's where we'll literally manifest oneness. We'll manifest oneness. I um, I have a brief story, and then I'll wrap up. I, I, I live here in the mountains. I live in the country. I also am connected to the indigenous people here in the Western United States. Beautiful culture that has been through so much suffering, so much uh, even genocide in, in, in this country. And there's a story I was told by one of the elders in these tribes. And he said there was a great sage, a great chief, a great leader. And he called his son to him because he was going to die soon. And he said to his son, he said, within me are two wolves. He said, one is the wolf of anger and fear, and it's ravenous. He said, the other is the wolf of love and trust and peace. And he said, these wolves are constantly fighting within me. They're constantly at war. Well, the son looked at his father and said, oh my goodness, father, which wolf will win? And the father answered quite confidently, the one that I feed, the one that I feed. So as we navigate through this and as we see these great events in the heavens, let's choose to feed the wolf of love. Let's choose to feed the wolf of peace and trust and uh, and watch what happens. Watch what happens. It happens on an individual level, and that ripples out into a global level. I, I send my love to each and every one of you. It's so um, honoring. I'm so grateful to be with you and be a part of this. And let's be. Let's be in love and be in peace and watch the skies and see the magnificent things that happen. And remember, there's always light, even if you don't see it. That's magnificent. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Absolutely so, wonderful. I I just wanted to uh, share with you too that when you talk about, you know, what we focus on is what we create. I was um, focusing on um, an angel uh, a little while ago, and then I looked up to the sky and I just want to share you with you all a photo that I took of the sky. Uh, I don't know if you can see there, but it's an angel with um, a dove. The dove is here and the angel is here. And that's what I was focusing on. And that's what was before me in the sky. And then today, this morning, same thing happened that um, a beautiful lady in my Patreon community, so who's also a friend, she was thinking about calling in her dragons. So she's calling in her dragons. And then she looks up to the sky. And this is what she saw. And this was just shared with me today, literally. And I don't know if you can see, but there's two eyes <laughs> and the face of a dragon. And she saw it really clearly, you know, when she looked up. So it was, we're actually constantly co-creating and manifesting what we want, what our, we want our reality to be. And um, that is exactly what you were talking about. So thank you so much, Jeffrey. That was really beautiful as I knew it would be. <laughs> so, so now I'd like to move on to, um, and these are such incredible, you know, guests that we have here today. We're, we're very blessed to have all these wonderful people here. So next, I would like to introduce to you the wonderful Lisa Rhodes, who is based in Italy. She's an entrepreneur and an investor involved in new innovation, innovations. She's highly spiritual She's had shows on things like the FCB Network, which I was on as well for a while. And um, she is knowledgeable in multiple fields. So it will be wonderful to hear Lisa's take at the moment in terms of what she sees happening for humanity right now. So a huge welcome, beautiful Lisa. Lovely to see you here. <laughs> Good, good evening to you and good morning over here. Thank you so much. It's really lovely to be here. And it's just wonderful to hear the inspirational stories. And right now I can say 
one thing I'm really drawn to is um, instead of the the news or the things that are going to happen, because I, I know that as as your your wonderful last guest was saying that you you feed you actually create what you're feeding and right now i'm feeding the spiritual side of me very deeply it's the only thing i have an interest in and quite honestly i find that the stories particularly of near death experiences are things that i'm completely drawn to so i think that's a message for humanity whatever our desires are our interests are are leading us to what it is that we're supposed to be experiencing next to expand our consciousness and then also to help us guide others. Because I believe very strongly that all of us who are aware of what has been happening are the leaders and the creators of what's going on. And as you, you asked me to do this, I was trying to think, what is it that I really think is a, is a great message? I don't think it's a message about the eclipse. I think it's a message of energy because the eclipse is an excuse to give energy, to allow us to believe that those energies are there because our beliefs then are the foundation of what we are creating over here. So I think right now, what I've, I think what I've been doing most of my time through this process is questioning. So I show question the narrative. I question the narrative of everything question the narratives that are going out there. I love the predictions that are going out there because you could literally go to all the media, whether it's mainstream media or alternative media, it's really all the same. It's creating a narrative. And if you scour and look at the pattern of the narrative, you then start to say, what are, my, what are they trying to make me feed? And what do I choose to feed? Because you got to step back from it and observe that pattern of what we're seeing here. And so what is the pattern that I'm seeing? I see the pattern of the noise of politics going away. People who say it, most people are like, I, I don't really care. I don't really care about that. And I love that part of it. So I think that's where humanity is going. They're creating and they're wising up. The big narrative, the big narratives that we really need to focus on and to release, because I think the energies of what the eclipse are trying to show us is what should we be releasing? We should be releasing those paradigms, the belief systems that have been the supposed foundation of our society. And the two biggest ones right now are the financial system and religion. Now, interestingly, you would say that those two things are at very opposite sides. You know, I was married to a man who came from a long lineage of, you know, Methodist ministers and, you know, religion and church. And, and quite honestly, the two couldn't be more inextricably linked, finance and religion. Because a little bit like our climate change narrative, isn't it amazing how, I, you know, I have friends who are very sophisticated, savvy Wall Street investors, ran their own hedge funds. It's like, you can buy redemption of carbon. You can buy it. I'm like, really interesting. Where are, the, where are the physics associated with buying redemption of carbon? But people believe that just like they bought, you can buy redemption for your soul. Right now, I think the thing that's really the most interesting thing is quiet. And I find that the most difficult thing to find is quiet because we have been bombarded with sound and frequency and that frequency to disconnect us from that inner knowing. So right now where I think humanity is, is that we have, we are, have an opportunity to listen, to be quiet, which is why I think we're all told to go to nature. But I think we need to learn how to be quiet with each other and connected to each other and in the current environments that we have. And I think we're going to stop that. So this assault of sound, this, this quietness. And then I think what's really interesting right now is that this narrative, and I love the narratives that are coming out here right now, because there are these little things that sort of, that look like non sequiturs coming in, boom, boom, boom. And those non sequiturs are right now all about technology travel. And I find that one particularly intriguing because 
why is travel and technology all of a sudden, why after 40 years or so of non-supersonic travel, do we see an Instagram, not even in like technology person, Instagram, the supersonic airplane? That was a year ago. Now we're seeing there's a train, a high-speed train from New York City to Miami, three and a half hours. That's about how long it takes to fly. Yet we've had a system of trains that didn't even function on the Northeast side of the U.S. Fascinating to me. I think that is a, a reason. The reason for that is, is that we are the creators. We are here now to, as Gally Lucy was saying, to create this new amazing world. How do we create? We need to go out of our comfort zone. We need to see other things that are different. We need to be in something different. And that's what travel is all about. Because it's not about, oh, I took a vacation and I'm taking a pretty picture for Instagram. It's about the interaction and the experience that you have talking with someone. I remember as I moved here to Italy, someone took me around to the house of the mayor of a very, very small rural town here in Southern Puglia. And I remember sitting down with his family and his parents and his, you know, his house and watching the artichokes grow, which to me was the most amazing thing coming from New York City to see an artichoke growing out of the ground. To see and experience a few hours with someone and their family in a life that had this incredible network and was connected with nature and was trying to change something. And I know that my being there is creating a different energy and his experience and his family gave me a different energy. And that was the experience of travel. That's the moment, not going to the cathedrals or going to Venice or going to these supposedly special big artisan art um, marvels of the world. It was that conversation with him in broken Italian, broken English, where we started to say, I saw what he was trying to do with the land. He saw that I was interested in that. And we both learned from each other. And this travel, I think, is how we're going to create and how we're going to connect humanity. And I'll sum it up with this. Um, we, nature repeats itself. You look at the crystal structures, the Fibonacci series, it repeats itself over and over again into the minuscule, into the grander. And right now, one of the things that I'm hearing about are how the trees on our planet are connected and particularly the aspen trees. And in a way, because they connected into the root system, into the earth, and they connect to each other and they talk, I think that's what we're doing. We're connecting in. We're connecting into each other through this grounding, through our connection with nature. And I find it very interesting that my dog's name is Aspen. So I thought that was kind of ironic as well. Yeah. On that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but that, that's, that's what I'm thinking of right now. So um, I really appreciate the opportunity to share that and to absolutely listen to everybody here. And thanks everybody for your thoughts and quite frankly, inspiration this morning. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. That's a wonderful and, and unique and different perspective on everything that's really uh, important at this time. And, and I guess you could also talk about the, the travel that's happening as we're traveling from one type of energy to another en energy as we go forward with, you know, the solar eclipse. That's a form of travel in itself, I guess. But um, yeah. <laughs> but that, that was really, really beautiful to, to hear your um contribution there thank you so much lisa and we do have some um guests that that do can't stay the whole time alex for example has to head off shortly to his uh destination in the zone of silence and we'll be excited to hear about all that alex when you when you come back i don't know if you'll have any uh internet when you're there <laughs> but um but if anyone else needs to go we, we totally understand i think bill bill's may have to go and Lisa may have to go but thank you so much we've got still some incredible speakers coming so please everyone stay and listen to what everyone has to share because I think everyone has such a different and um, important perspective on what's happening on the planet at the moment my next guest I would like to introduce to everyone is David Maria 
Dave and Maria is based in the mystical Mount, Sh Mount Shasta in the USA. He's an embodiment guide and a speaker, a radical transformation counsellor at the Eden Template. And by the way, with everyone that's spoken today, I'm going to have all their details at the bottom of in the description of this video. So you can contact any of them and, and find their wonderful books and things. Um, Jeffrey C. Olson has a wonderful book called Knowing on his near-death experience. And I'll be sharing all the details of people's information underneath as well. But uh, David is going to share with us today another perspective that is something new that seems to be happening on the planet in a sense that, you know, we, we are bringing in the divine feminine energies more and more. And uh, David has just very recently experienced uh, the most awesome sort of soul connection uh, with his uh the divine feminine and masculine aspect of himself which is um one all source energy and i'll, I'll let him share all the details of that because i'm probably not explaining it very well but he is connected with a lady called vivica in spain vivica couldn't be here today uh she's on her way to glastonbury for the uh solar eclipse but uh, she is and he is one soul. And this is something also that's happening at the moment on the planet that there's this incredible divine um, coming together of the, the divine feminine and masculine. So I'd love David to share with us what is happening at the moment with him in this experience and show what, what amazing potentials are happening now on the planet so huge welcome david so wonderful to have you here we thank you medina and i'm gonna go a little off script just just a little bit so um I, 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 you kind of expected that from me <laughs> yes. i i wanted to speak to what hasn't been said so far as to what what the opportunity that this eclipse coming up in just a few days really is presenting. So at, at the very peak of the eclipse, everything stands still. And in, in that standing stillness, there is the opportunity to, to connect with the still point in the heart of Gaia, in the heart of the earth, to connect with the still point inside of each one of us, inside of our hearts. And in that moment, the opportunity is available to everybody on the planet. Whether they will choose to do this or not is up to each individual because we all have free choice. But there is the opportunity to completely let go, to completely surrender everything that you ever thought about who you were where you were what you might be what you might become all of your stories everything and just sit in stillness sitting in stillness is one of the most wonderful things that we can do it's the equivalent to jumping into the void and whether or not whether or not we stay there for a while or whether we tend to look back that's always going to be each individual's choice and that's always how spiritual growth happens is that each individual does their work and then their work gets contributed to to the whole so i i I'm really looking forward to the opportunity that is being presented for a lot of people on the planet to be able to make a shift like that. Nobody's going to be forced. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Everybody, everybody has to make their own choice. Whether you can surrender or not, that's up to each one of us. So, and speaking then about myself and, and Vivica, um, even, even though we now have the full awareness that we are literally one being, we are one soul, 
and there is absolutely no difference between us yes she's a woman i'm a man that that's that, that, that that's an obvious piece but she's me and i'm and i'm her whatever she thinks feels whatever it is it doesn't matter i i feel it in the same moment and the same with whatever i'm feeling i'm pretty confident that in this moment she's in glastonbury in england and she's feeling the conversation that i'm having, having right now that's just the way that it is what we have discovered is that our lives even though we didn't know it have been paralleling with each other ever since we were born the circumstances of what happened to each one of us may be different but the emotional content within it is, is absolutely identical in, including the fact that um i I bring I bring through transmissions and as meditations and she brings them through in the exact same moment she gets them at the same time she receives them in the exact moment that I do and she is more heart centric than I am I I tend to be more geeky if you will I I I tend to like to really understand how the cosmos works and how galaxies and planets and everything interact with each other and how all of that quote unquote works in terms of the math and the physics and stuff like that she's extremely heart centric she is heart and what happens with us is that anything that we focus on and it doesn't matter what it is anything that we focus on just because of the nature of who we are, there is a field of unity consciousness that generates around us, that forms us. So in all of the classes that we offer, that field is there. And we offer classes regularly on, on an ongoing basis. And those that know me, they, 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 can, they can tell you that it's palpable and this is not this is not conjecture and speaking to kind of on the tail end of what jeffrey said about sharing becoming love is that in a in a field of energy like that and this is not about me this is not about her this is this is about the creator beginning to come through all of us it, it always the creator always comes through us as us so as as the love that we become flows through us we become even more love and this is what the possibility of what is coming thank you david yeah. that is really wonderful was that everything that you'd like to share today um, I'd, I'd like to make one comment, mm -hmm. and that is nobody has ever had a near-death experience. When do we get past this? When do, when do we walk into the fact that nobody ever dies, in, ever? So people have near-life experiences. They leave their bodies and they begin to experience what the truth of reality really is. As human beings, we're so stuck inside this, this, this shell here, this holographic projection, that we actually think it's real. We actually think we can die, and we, we, and we don't. And so we've always referred to it as near-death experiences, because we think we can die, but nobody ever dies. Yes. We're all eternal beings. We always have been eternal beings. So I'm I'm on a campaign to call those near life experiences that <laughs> maybe maybe you can re remember how alive you really are. Fantastic, thank you, David. Profound Thanks. as always. <laughs> thank you. We, we, we just um so good to have all these amazing perspectives that just get us to think more deeply about all aspects of what we're experiencing at the moment, and um. I'll be very interested to hear, uh, you know, other people's experience as well. If they're if they're experiencing this sort of coming together of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, this time I have heard a few other instances. So that that's really exciting. 
a, like a rebalancing of the whole. It's amazing. So thank you, thank you again. And now I'd like to introduce the wonderful Yvonne Teo Burst from Victoria, Australia. She's a conscious channel, shaman, author, intuitive life coach, spiritual mentor and guide, a spiritual way shower and teacher. She also runs retreats in Bali and has for many years. And um, she is now a soul mama of a growing new earth community on the Mornington Peninsula as well. So huge welcome to Yvonne, and I call her Vaughn. <laughs> and it's wonderful to have you here. And I love to hear your wisdom today, Vaughn. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Medina. I feel very honored and privileged to be part of this wonderful group. And I'm just sitting here, I'm sort of, you know, I'm a cat woman, I love cats, and I'm sitting here purring because... <laughs> I paint cats, so I know, I know how you feel. <laughs> this is only the tiniest examples of the beautiful beings that are on this mission to change the world and to ascend into the world of peace, harmony, love, and well-being for all, then the world is in bloody good hands, as an Aussie would say. <laughs> so I'm listening to everyone and I'm going, wow, I could have a field day. And I'm a bit like, you know what um, Bill said earlier, you know, turn me off because it, there's just so much wisdom and, and wonderful inspiration that's just come forward already. Um, but I guess the, the big one, um, so I started this journey in 1987, you know, harmonic conversions is when I got a kick up the butt and told that I had a mission to fulfill and I'm going, oh, what? <laughs> um, and for me, it's about looking back and seeing how much has changed in that time. And, and that's, again, for me, a purring moment because when I started that, you know, so the word soul um, was... The, the that thing that's on the bottom of your shoe and now when somebody says soul almost no one thinks of their shoe that is a huge change but I really want to um, go where I guess my essence is all about and that is pure love and I would like to tackle this thing about unconditional love and, and the bell, again, something that Bill said, you know, he wished he could love um, everyone the same. But I don't quite see love that way. I see love is something you choose to become. It's not something you do. And when you become love, I love every one of you. What you do with that, I have no control over, nor do I care, really. It'd be lovely if you embraced it the way that I intended. But the thing is, it's a purely selfish thing. I love you because it makes me feel great. And so why would I not? But this kind of love is only possible when we drop the judgment. And I think judgment has been the greatest hurdle for us to overcome, even more so than fear. So all my work really has been based on connection to soul, to, to know that we are soul in a, in a human suit for a very small time. And hey, there's no death. I'm absolutely sure of that. So my mission has been right from the beginning because I was given the whole scenario of what was happening and why we had to go through all of this not in detail of how, but just why and the end product. And I'm still here um, on my 85th year to still be inspiring, still be alive and loving, and still be part of this movement that is growing every day. And for me, it's all about know thyself. And it's about love thyself and then trust thyself and if i just expand on that a little then when we truly know self 
you know it all says first know thyself well that is all what my work is about because when we really truly know who we are that we are this expression of prime creator whatever you want to call that you know quantum field of intelligence that is life itself we are an expression of that so what's not to love what's not we don't love it because we don't know it. We have been completely uh, going through amnesia of knowing we were so connected to this survival of the suit. But when we really know who we are deep in our heart, then we go to that place of oneness. We know we are the creator of everything in our world. And so when we come to that place, what's not to love about that? So then once from the knowing oneself, we must love every little morsel. Every little morsel. You know, the good, the bad, the indifferent. And I, you know, people laugh at me because I just look at people and they go, I am so in love with me. And I am. I am so in love with what I have learned that I truly am. And so from that perspective, what's not to trust? And that's been my biggest issue of late. That trust has been really pushed because a little bit like you, Medina, I've suddenly been thrown out of my place that I'm living with having to find another place. And so, you know, I teach everybody, just allow it to come in. Well, nothing was coming in. <laughs> and it was getting very close to the time that I need to be out of where I am. And then, you know, only this morning I suddenly went, yes, but that's not, not how it really works. And, and this relates to the eclipse. The word that has come through more about the eclipse is opportunity. I think some of the downside of this, you know, telling everybody this is this monumental move moment in time. Well, you know, we're going to wake up in the next day and everything's going to be exactly the same. We might not be because we are sensitive. We are beings that are aware of every little fragment of energy that is changing the world. Well, that is because we have been working on this instrument. But the average person they think that it's still going to, the eclipse itself is going to do something, but it isn't. It is like you said, unless we sit in stillness in that moment and connect to the heart in that moment. But how many people will do that? How many are still sitting waiting for the eclipse to do the work? But it doesn't. That's a great point. Really great point. No, so, so it's an not to be in attachment with that. Yeah. It's an opportunity to spend time with self and to really tune in and to really know that we have the power. And we are the power. And so with that, I want to just thank you all for everything that you're contributing to this amazing change that we're all undergoing. And we're all one. And we're all little aspects of something amazingly great. And let's just know that we're all joined heart to heart. And I would like to just say that I too have had the experience of have one soul and two people. It was my growth buddy who is no longer on this planet. And I, it's a most amazing experience. It's like sharing a soul. Wow. wow. It's, not, it's not like sharing a soul. It is sharing a soul. It is. Well, that's perfectly true. But I want to just take it one step further. We're all sharing the soul of humanity. Yeah. True. Love Very you. true. Thank you. Very and true. Thank you, Medina, for the honor of being here. You're so welcome. That was very, very profound as <laughs> as everything pretty much that's been said today and 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 all sharing such an important piece of the whole puzzle. So thank you, thank you, Vaughn. Really great points there. I'll move on because uh, time is moving on with us. So I'm going to call in now the wonderful Lou Martin from Ireland. He's a divine channel, intuitive uh, singer and a musician. And he does a lot of uh, wonderful things online with his Facebook groups. 
He has uh, worked uh -oh. with Dr. Michael Beckley uh -oh. for many years. Did she freeze up on, on everyone? Yeah. Oh, she's oh back. did I freeze? Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll start again. Uh, Lou uh, Martin is based in Ireland. He's a divine channel, intuitive singer and musician. And he has some uh, wonderful things to share. I'll cut it a bit shorter because um, I just want to bring him in. But he has uh, some incredible insights, I'm sure, into the human condition at the moment incredibly spiritual and amazing divine channel and a beautifully creative soul. So welcome, Lou. Wonderful to have you here. Thanks, Medina. It's great to be here with you and my my brother and uh, teacher, uh, Brother David. And um, yeah, it's a joy. It's an honor. Um, I'll just dive straight into the deep end of the pool. James, I love what you said, brother. I, I salute your courage. I thank you for sharing your story with all of us. Is that uh, Jeffrey? You, know, you mean Jeffrey? Sorry. Uh, yes. Jeffrey. Yeah. Sorry, Jeffrey. Yeah. Thank you, Medina. Sorry. Uh, I'm like, what am I going to say? Okay. Um, here I go. So we're, we're shifting uh, from belief to knowing, as as uh, Jeffrey's book sh showed us here. David has been a wonderful uh, guide for me over the last year, and he's uh, he's been a great inspiration and Vivica is a dear friend as well. So I really recommend to you uh, David's work and Vivica's work and the two of them together are nothing short of extraordinary. And I have an interview, two interviews with them on my on my YouTube channel and please uh, check that out at some point, we'll put the link there. But um, yeah, this is an opportunity. It's the opportunity of many lifetimes. And I think we're all uh, in the same tribe here and uh, we, we've all been getting the whispers and the, the, the hints and the signs and the, the synchronicities. I was on last night talking about the eclipse on my Facebook channel. And when I finished the talk, it was 55 minutes and 55 seconds. And I thought, OK, I'm, I'm in the flow of things. That's nice. And when I woke up this morning to, uh, to come on to this great program that Medina has worked so hard, uh, to put together and done such a brilliant job as always. So grateful to you, my friend. Uh, it was 444. So uh, anyway. And, and uh, can I say my video promoting it was five minutes and 55 seconds. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Yes. I, I, I noticed that as well. So I, I hope you're all feeling me over here. Yeah. It's just a joy and an honor to be in such a, such a powerful group. And uh, I know that community uh, and conscious community uh, and enlightened community is going to be so important. Uh, and it's not something we, we figure out uh, in our little minds, as everyone is saying, but it's what we feel in our hearts. And uh, it was lovely to see uh, Alex Ling, who I've uh, listened to now through Sasha Stone's uh, last two programs about the eclipse. There's a lot of wonderful information there. Uh, but representing Ireland today, as a, it's my privilege to do as a as an American blow in over here, uh, I want to quote uh, uh, one of the Irish greats and that's John O'Donohue. He says, in the kingdom of love, there is no competition. There is no possessiveness or control. The more love you give away, the more love you will have. One remembers here Dante's notion that the secret rhythm of the universe is the rhythm of love, which moves the stars and the planets Love is the source, center, and destiny of experience. And uh, I just found that last night, and I thought that really speaks to the moment. So, you know, we're getting such a, um, a huge gift, as we've all been saying here. And uh, it, what's the quote from the Bible? I'll, I'll send you a blessing that's too great for you to receive. Prove me herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will open the window of heaven and pour forth a blessing that is too great for you to receive. And as we're saying about love, uh, Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's experience and, and David's and my own and everyone's here, it, it, it transcends our boundaries. It breaks apart our illusions of separation. It brings us back into a magical and miraculous reality. And I do feel that uh, what Alex and others have said, that this is a uh, a, a restart and uh, in that moment of the eclipse we're remembering more of who we are than we've ever been able to do in this earth I believe that's the possibility and the opportunity and David and Vivica are doing a group uh, for for that the day before as well and then for the 40 days after we're in this 
uh, birth canal. Uh, yeah, and birth, as the women of the world will tell you, is a messy, painful, ecstatic, joyous business of surrender. And I believe that's that's what we're called forth into this reality. So my, my feeling here is, again, just such overwhelming gratitude and joy uh, to be in this group and to share these ideas with everyone. And that we we sing our song of of love and freedom, and um, uh, you know I love the indigenous cultures and what they remind us of. Ireland has its version of that, and all of the world has the many many tribal cultures. And this is their time to teach, I believe, all of us once again, you know, to love Mother Earth, to respect life, and to treat each other with dignity and uh, compassion and a sense of of oneness that we're one family, one tribe, here for one purpose, and that is to learn how to love and to be that love. And it's my honor to be here with you today. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Lou, that was perfect. Oh, it just warms my heart, these beautiful words today. That's exactly what people need to hear. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I um, also have an acknowledgement at the beginning of the talk today for the original people here in uh, this region uh, as well that I want to acknowledge them uh, in this forum as well. So you'll see that at the beginning as we go in. So I'm going to move on and um, call in the amazing Sequoia Haskell. She's based in Australia, Queensland. She's a clairvoyant and she calls herself, <laughs> she told me to say this, a shit shifter. She, <laughs> she's in a book. <laughs> she's in a book, uh, which is an anthology, anthology called Perfectly Imperfect. And her chapter was called All Masters Were Once Disasters. This was a number one international bestseller, same as Jeffrey's book as well, too, was um, earlier. And so she's here today to share with us a divine channeling, which will be very special as well. So huge welcome, Sequoia. It's so wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So do you want me to just go straight into the channeling? That would be beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Unless you want to say anything before you go in. <laughs> um, but yeah, just agreeing with everybody. I've just got a little poem I wrote years ago, and I feel like this time is about empowerment, not empowerment, empowerment. And the age of Aquarius, I'm a double Aquarian, and you're talking about 555. Five, five. I was born at 555, five, five, which is Christ consciousness. So that's what we're all here to do, to find that Christ consciousness within us, which is that deep place of love and that peeling back the layers and loving all of the aspects of ourselves so um and i've i've just got this vision of humanity like communities coming together it's like we need to all come together now we've all had this time of separation and isolation now it's time to all come together in communion and harmony bringing back communities it takes a village to bring up a child so i feel like we're coming back to the tribal ways which is what is been lost and bringing but it's coming from a different place now so I've just got a quick poem that I wrote and it seems to tie in with what everyone's been talking about um, I am the center of my own universe I am the creator around which all of my life re revolves I am the creator of my own universe I mold it with my thoughts I give it substance substance with my actions I give it life with the breath of my speech I am responsible for the creation all around me. I am a co-creator with all of the other creators in my sphere of living. Each person around me is a center and creator of their own universe. Each universe is unique to its creator. God is the linking force between the universes. Love is the bridge between universes. No one else's universe can change or destroy my own. I am in complete control. I have total responsibility. And that's what I feel like this whole, that we're coming into this time of just personal responsibility. That so ties in just, beautifully, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, you know, and it is. And the eclipse is going to be amazing. Whatever happens, it doesn't matter. Like it's, as long as we're in our hearts, it's, it's amazing. So um, so I'll just tune in to see what my higher self has to say. Then, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go. But thank you so much for being here. I'd like to, for, to be able to be here. I feel very honoured. Greetings, dear hearts. We come together at this time in humanity where we are standing many fold 
to greet each and every one of you into that place within you, that divinity that is within. Now is the time of ascension for all of humanity. And this moment that we are coming towards has been the culmination of many, many lifetimes of persecution, of violation, of devastation. And now we all stand united in our own sovereignty, within our own empowerment, and within our own open hearts. And through this energy, we create a vortex of love. And this vortex of love is more powerful than what we could comprehend with the mind. This love is our divine birthright, and this love is what we are returning to, for this is our divinity and our sovereignty. We are here with you all at this time in union and harmony, sending blessings to all of humanity to say to stay grounded, to be at peace, to stay in your hearts, and offer the random acts of kindness for every random thought every act that you do has a ripple effect out into the cosmos and you have no idea of the impact of the vortex of energy that we are creating at this time and also that we are co-creating we are stepping back into our divine god body selves our divine masculine feminine and this is also the time when the veil it transverses and the twin flame energy is allowed again to be re reunited for it is the twin flame energy the balanced divine masculine coming together that brings about the change for all of humanity so no dear hearts it all is well you are all divine sovereign beings of light you wear your truth you know your worth you own your power so claim it now and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and so it is Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sequoia. From New Zealand, I will say that although Sequoia was based in New Zealand um, for many years and born there, she's now in Queensland, Australia. But I wanted to put New Zealand there, and strictly speaking, I was <laughs> I was able to do that because you were from New Zealand originally. So thank you, thank you, Sequoia. And now I'd like to move thank on so and much. go <laughs> and go. I'm sorry, I have to go. <laughs> oh no worries. Thank you, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, wonderful contribution there. And I'd like to now go to uh, Giannis in Greece. And Giannis is a wonderful, he's been a wonderful freedom fighter, a truth lover, activist, stood up um, for the uh, people of Greece in a uh, law and in the, in the justice system there, and also won two cases. Um, a really uh, courageous man who uh, went against the tide of uh, energy um, throughout the whole uh, earlier days of the pandemic process and stood up, stood his ground and actually ended up winning. So he has been a wonderful uh, way shower and, and being of light in that part of the world. So it's wonderful to welcome you here, Yanis. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for all the effort you are making to help humanity to awaken. Thank you for uh, inviting me once again uh, to your special show, Arise Humanity, and uh, in particular today, I'm very honored to be among all these special guests from uh, different countries of the world, giving me the opportunity to take part and uh, express my opinion uh, in this uh, special discussion entitled Solar Eclipse uh, Global Forum 2024. Uh, Medin, first of all, I would like to introduce myself to your special guest, uh, leaving aside my professional qualities, I'm a simple person uh, who uh, has always had inner concerts most of my life so far. Already in uh, 2015, uh, I started to confirm uh, that something's not right in our society and uh, in general in the world, world. Uh, that something has been hiding from us or uh, have been uh, told a lot of lies already. Uh, the pandemic uh, pandemic plan of COVID uh, was designed to reveal the real truth uh, so that uh, we go through the difficult years of revelations. Uh, it um, may be something different from the revelation measured in the scriptures, but either uh, one way or the other, it had to be this way. So you, I, and many others in the world are uh, an important part of all of this to help the world in this passage into higher spiritual dimension. 
Uh, now, as uh, for the solar eclipse uh, that uh, will take place on the 8th of uh, April 2024, we should all know that uh, this kind of uh, natural and cosmic phenomena uh, have always uh, marked uh, some important events, sometimes negative and sometimes positive. It doesn't matter. And uh, it's, uh, it's no accident. As we know, everything around us, uh, the Earth, us, everything is energy and frequencies. And uh, that's uh, where it all starts and where it all depends. Before we get to the point, we need to explain uh, some uh, basic things. We hear concepts such as solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, space, light years, NASA, and many others. NASA says that uh, as they teach in schools, uh, uh, that uh, there is a space, the planets, and specifically uh, we are told uh, that the moon is a quarter of the size of the Earth and uh, the, the sun is 100 times of the size of the Earth. And so uh, that is uh, the distance between the Earth and the moon is about uh, 385,000 kilometers and the distance between uh, the Earth uh, uh, and the sun is 149 million kilometers. And uh, even that, the Earth is so small uh, in the infinite universe. None of uh, this can have any application in reality. Uh, it is uh, not possible the, with this uh, size that NASA tells us that a uh, small planet, the moon, uh, can hide a huge sized sun. Uh, and that's uh, what common sense says. Based on uh, that, uh, we should have uh, much more frequent solar eclipses. NASA has uh, deceived the whole world. It uh, wants to us to believe that uh, we are insufficient, incredibly tiny in a vast universe. They want to hide the Creator, the Almighty God, as you know, as we know. In fact, uh, what happens is uh, that the lunar eclipses only occur during the full moon, uh, when the moon is uh, at the ecliptic transit point opposite the sun, while, uh, while the solar eclipses only occur during uh, the new moon, when the moon is uh, at the ecliptic transit point and aligned with the sun. Uh, we should uh, know that eclipses have been accurately predicted by cultures around the world for thousands of years before the heliocentric uh, spherical Earth was even glimmer in um, the imaginations of Copernicus, Copernicus sorry, in the first century, Anno Domini, where uh, he accurately predicted eclipse for 600 years based on the flat stationary Earth as accurately as anyone living today in 600 before Christ. Believe it or not, every time after an eclipse of uh, kind, some kind, we have an event. Usually, uh, after uh, every lunar eclipse, we had a negative event. For example, a war will start, and uh, after a solar eclipse, a positive event, uh, like uh, the end of the war. Nothing is random. We still have uh, to say that uh, the sun is a sign of uh, the nations of the nations, and uh, the moon is a sign of the Jews. The eclipse of uh, the sun uh, that will take place on uh, April 8th uh, can be called the most important eclipse of all time, as many people said. On uh, the basis of all the events, we can say that uh, it marks the end of the cabal, uh, the end of the deep state, the end of the tyranny, and uh, the liberation of humanity. That is why the, we, that is uh, why uh, we, we humans, we the people, should uh, fear nothing, despite of all uh, the own scenarios broadcast by the mainstream media. The solar eclipse is a crisis uh, warning of the nations. Uh, the remarkable thing is that the cities through which uh, the eclipse track passes are zona, and uh, where it starts six cities names nine V. Uh, and the only city in the world named Rapture, uh, which is also at the X point of the diagram, if you show the tracks of uh, the eclipse. Uh, in the history, the nine bits were Gentiles, and Jonah declares this uh, wars to them. Jonah uh, began to enter the city going a day's walk, and uh, he cried out in 40 days' time, uh, 9V uh, will be overthrown. So you understand about history. In uh, 40 days after the eclipse uh, will be May 80th, uh, it's the eve of Pentecost. Uh, it's near the Frau Dister, the whole of the cabal, but uh, supporting the matrix. 
Uh, also, many people are talking about the rapture. There will be no rapture in the sense of, uh, but they want us uh, to believe. Rapture meaning ascension. Uh, we are uh, in uh, the very end of Revelation. Trump talked about 82% uh, uh, a few days ago. According to Trump and the Arcturians, the Pleiadians, uh, the Andromedians, the Earth Alliance, and uh, the others, uh, the ascension is now unstoppable, uh, Medin. Finally, yes, I've heard that too. Yes, yes. yes. yes I think finally, uh -huh, consensus finally, on that. Uh -huh. no. Uh, we should say that uh, this eclipse uh, symbolizes the darkness before the light. Like uh, all the phenomena always symbolize a new beginning. Uh, there will be a new beginning after the purification and the freedom of uh, the soul uh, that will take place. We are going into the light. Uh, we have to prepare ourselves. Christ, uh, Christ energy is coming to earth and uh, humanity. And uh, only God knows uh, the when and the how. It is uh, the Alpha and the Omega of the creation. Men have spoken, but uh, uh, the final word is the creators of all that. Angels, of course, uh, are coming. And finally, Jesus Christ told us that uh, our source frequencies, frequencies matter, and uh, those who are pure uh, will be drawn into the light. There is no escape, Medin. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless and Godspeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Yanis. That was a wonderful background of information there to go with the information today. So uh, I love that you have that um, scientific knowledge, but also the spiritual side of things as well with your uh, awareness of, of what you've just expressed. So thank you, thank you. And I really want to also say thank you for, I know you've put in so many hard yards, as we all have done really for the last three years, but you've done a wonderful job. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, and we just got two more things to share before we finish today. Thank you so much, everyone. I don't want you to miss these last two things. We have a wonderful sharing from Ioana in Romania. And she's going to just share with us a little bit of light language. And then we're going to hear the most beautiful song from Gali Lucy uh, to finish the presentation today. So Ioana is... Um, she says she grew up in a family where God was present as the one who helps with everything. And she decided she wanted to be a nun at 14, but it took her to the path of channeling and spiritual growth, working with vulnerable people. She became a master channel and uses light language and symbols for healing. So uh, she also works with people with dementia, which is, you know, really important work. So thank you, Ioana. We'd love to hear from you with your light language, just a little bit of light language before we finish today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much to all of you for uh, letting me enjoy your energy. This was absolutely magic for me. So uh, without further ado, <laughs> I will just tell you that I live in the most uh, beautiful country of Romania, which is called the Mother Mary Garden. And please come to enjoy our beautiful pieces of land with magical energy and uh, caves with portals and uh, people that would make you feel very welcome in this corner of the world. So um, let's bring in a uh, light language that I, my intention is to help us uh, keep our hearts and uh, ground our beautiful intention for this eclipse. I will call in the energies that would be right for every one of us at this moment. Here, here, kia suna, ia kota sama, ia rotahi, ia shama, okeatama suha, nehianata, kiera nakosana, ushmadayata, endayaka, nehiamu, ia rakantusha, ikiaro sa, iam daraita. The beauty of this moment is that you can get your message as you feel the frequencies in your heart. 
this is the beauty of um, receiving energy through light language because everyone we will get a personal message you hear shah eno masti hontaya ka tah tu ye aahin e da sakir shanda ya hletam ba ishiram ta ik ya harta nakhdu ishana kya te shu ishirana uktaya we are grateful that you got together and give us the opportunity to be next to you to surround you and to promise all our assistance and support in all you want to do thank you thank you thank you that was really really gorgeous you you really feel that light language hit you in the heart actually <laughs> <laughs> because it's that soul to soul communication and there's no barriers as there is with uh the languages that we that we experience on earth so thank you that was incredibly beautiful Ioana and uh, a perfect way to finish and just before we go I would love to share with everyone this transcendent song from Dali Lucy who's an amazing singer songwriter we also have another amazing singer songwriter here Lou Martin but I could only share one today <laughs> so uh this is uh Gali Lucy's and um all the co connections for these uh, things will be below in the description again I want to thank everybody uh, for this incredible um gathering today and it it really I feel so elevated in my soul being among all you amazing souls and hearing your words today thank you from the bottom of my heart and I'll just finish with this song and I hope that everyone out there has got something really special from this forum that uh, raises you know our frequencies and raises the planet at this time in in any way that's possible with this incoming um, amazing cosmic event that we're going to be experiencing soon Thank you, everyone. I to save the to wake you try to leave their souls to shape the world try it i i can wait the i can see me on silence while i was here before now I'm not alone. Oh, so my wings are broken. When angel falls, they rise the Lord. Oh, my wings are broken. You see the truth. Now peace will come, oh, why can't I try to save it all, to wake the Lord, try to leave the soul to shade the world, try it high. I shall I with angels on, they rise in love. Oh, my dreams, I love you. You see the truth, now peace will come. Oh, my dreams, I love you.
To save and to waste and try to leave their souls to shape the world. But I I can not the they waste the world of my wheels. I'm a rookie. You see the truth. No peace will come. Oh, my God, try to save it all. To wake the Lord to lift the soul, to shake the world, try it they rise in the you see the truth, now peace will come to Wasn't that spectacular? Thank you, everyone. Love and peace to everyone out there. Thank you to all the amazing guests today. And let's do this. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.